The Great Fungi Pheno Hunt. I mean, why are we going full mushroom matchmaker? Why spend months or even years hunting, isolating, and breeding fungi? Can't we just buy a spore syringe or liquid culture and call it a day? Well, you could, but where's the fun in that? More importantly, where's the genetic diversity? If we want to create something new, resilient, or just plain weird, we're going to need to play with nature's building blocks. And realistically, all we need is just a different genetic source from what we have currently. So yes, even these store-bought mushrooms are still genetically diverse, and we can use them to start the pheno hunt. Lion's mane in the front, we have the blue oyster in the back. Now we'll take our lion's mane swab. We're gonna grab just the tiniest singular thread. We'll pop open this plate, reposition our swab, grab and release. Make sure that little piece stays in here. Getting a little messy, but that should work. We'll throw this lion's mane swab into its tube. This labeling is super important. It lets me backlog my work. And we are going to drag it through and at the very end, release that piece in there and close it back up. Now, I think at this point, we may have a few putative monocultures. I haven't confirmed them under a microscope yet, so what we need to do is transfer just a small sector from the leading edge of those little cultures from the grab and drag plate, move those to new water agar plates, and wait for germination there. I'm not going to view them under the microscope yet because I want to isolate them and grow them out a little bit further first. And we're going to start here with this king oyster. So I will uh, sterilize these real quick, let those cool down. And now with the tweezers cooled down, we'll come in to our plate, look for another germination spot, just the tiniest bit, and do this into another sector over here. And I see one more at the end that I'm going to target now. Grab just a little bit from the leading culture, sector that one off. We want to make sure that we're sterilizing our tool between every single grab because if there is a chance that we get one cell that touches another monokaryotic cell, it's no longer mon monokaryotic. Those cells are going to mate, they're going to transfer genetic information, and we're going to be left with a, a dicaryon cell. And we'll put this plate back in incubation for a few days to see how those uh, expand. Once we have a few monokaryon cultures of the same species isolated, we can go ahead and start crossbreeding them to dicaryons. And once we fruit some dicaryon cultures, we can pick the fruits that we like, collect spores, take tissue cultures, and advance our pheno hunt. We're gonna crossbreed these monokaryons and observe them under a microscope. Until then though, thank you all very much for joining and we'll see you in the next one.